beyond what mm. you think and your yeah. opinion, because your opinions are not facts about me. Even though it hurt me at that mm. time, it wasn't a fact, but I didn't know that back then. Killer, killer, bo- 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 podcast. Killer, killer, official, <laughs> THTC, the UK's leading ethical streetwear label. Organically grown and ethically built garments from hemp, organic cotton and other sustainable materials. 2019 is their 20th anniversary year. Join me with THTC as a Killer Keller podcast sponsor celebrating music, social activism, hemp and street culture. THTC, eco-fashion redefined since 1999. Killer Keller Podcast. And we here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Killer Keller Podcast. Welcome to the Keller Dome. Subscribe, like, share, tell a friend to tell a friend like good business. The only place for street culture, music and more um, in your earphones. Big shout out to Graffiti Kings, as always. On it down, and uh, yeah, I go by the name of Killer Keller, man himself, beatboxer host, and all of that. And yeah, I have got a very special guest inside today, the first time I've actually met, which is actually criminally bad, isn't it? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you may have heard of the band Mystique, which she's gone on to do some amazing stuff. Uh, a very, a very uh, intelligent lady. I've had a conversation with her already, and it's a pleasure <laughs> to have her on board. Sabrina Washington, how are we? I'm fine, how are you? <laughs> oh, I'm good. How are you? Isn't it mad? It's mad. Yeah. All these orbits, all these planets, and we've never actually ever bugged, ever. I know, right? Mm-hmm. Orbits and frequencies. Orbits and frequencies. Mm-hmm. Uh, you are local, you're in the area, yeah. and I had no idea. I had no idea. I grew up in the area. Mm. I grew up in Harston. Mm. Harston has been my place where, I, it's I, been where, my, where my parents are still are. Yeah. Yep. It's changed, but everything does. Everything does. Everything evolves. Mm. There was a, there was somebody said something to me, something along the lines of, uh, "Cities don't need us; they replenish." You got to fight. You got to hold under the coattails of the city. Hmm, that's true. Do you feel that? It just I don't know. I just feel like, as you said, there's a lot of things changing mm. in a lot of areas that weren't really seen as valuable areas right, at yep. a time. Mm. But now they are because those areas were areas where people who came from, mm. you know, other countries mm. came to have their families and raise their families and raise them in a better, you know, They wanted them to have a better life. Mm. And these areas were the areas where people were commuting Mm. into the places that the work, the workers used to work. So they commuted. So commuting places Mm. are now more valuable than anything. That's right. Yeah, Yeah, they, they are that, that's prime real. It's prime real because they've always been traveling Mm. and they've always had to travel for their families because that's what they were doing. They Mm. was giving, building their families a better life. Sure. So all of those areas now where the regeneration is going on is where mm-hmm. a lot of working class people mm-hmm. have always been. Mm. Yeah, that's right. What we're saying is like, you know, it's, it's not a, it's not, it's not a um, class thing, but you can feel the top heaviness of certain uh, dynamics shifting. Yeah. Right? It I, is. I, think I don't think we're the only city as well, London. I think I think that applies to a lot of, you know, high-end like capital cities as well yeah i do i think it's a lot of change but Mm. i think is it a lot of change because people are seeing that seeing those areas now Mm. because maybe they weren't areas that they frequented in at all but now they're seeing those areas and they're like oh actually maybe it's not too bad yeah yeah yeah. so you know (laughs) compared to what they got paid for the other places yeah so i think they're looking (laughs) at it you know from different eyes Mm. because they that's not the place where they were born and grew but they're looking at it through different eyes that's right they're seeing it in a different perspective and maybe these places aren't as quote unquote dangerous or risky maybe there's a a a cultural appropriation that's come into play like people accept certain things cultures and whatnot maybe which they wouldn't have done in the 90s or 80s or 70s maybe there's a little bit of that yeah, I think there is a little bit of that. But remember, the areas where, you know, a lot of immigrants came mm. into London, they've always been mixed. Mm. It's always been a mixed bag, mm. a rainbow bag of communities mm. where you'd have Irish, you'd have Caribbean, you'd have Filipinos, you have every single 
repeat in every single generation. I love that. Yeah, because they came here to, you know, make a better way for their families. Yeah. So they came here to work. Yeah. So there was always a rainbow colour of people yeah. here. And I love that. That's what I signed up for about being in a sick, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? If I wanted one dimension, you know, I would have stayed where I, I left. You know, it's like you, you want more out of life and you want diversity. You want... You yeah. like you say that that fruit bowl of like the fruit bowl of learning mm. different things. When I was at school, I went to school with everyone. So mm. when you go to you know birthday parties, then you'd have different meals, mm. and you know you'd have oh yeah, I'd go and I'd have noodles here, or I'd go and have this here. So you'd have different Facts. different tastes mm. of everyone's life yeah. and you'd be introduced and you'd be like oh yeah okay I love that food or oh yeah no that cake was really good but it was mm. all from different countries that yeah. were mixing and generations mixing mm. and introducing each other to different things mm. so it didn't seem alien to nah. them no nah. because you'd have someone next door who's you know from I had an Irish neighbour and I had a Filipino neighbour that, you know... They're just still, unthinkable. Yeah, you just don't, you yeah. don't think twice. You don't think yeah. twice, they're still there. And then like, my friend mm. across the road, she was Asian, so she was there. So we, when I used to go there, I used to have the same. So at the end of the day, we all used to mix. Yeah. And we mixed and the respect was there because everyone's parents came here to make a better way. Yeah, that's right. Do you think it... I mean, it shapes you, for sure. It shapes you. It makes you a better, a, a more conscious person. Self-aware. I don't even think twice about who's in my block. It's no, you, no, because you don't think <laughs> you about don't. it because it's your normal. Yeah, it's not that like it's your normal mm. to be around multicultural people mm. and embrace their way of their how they do or what they their opinion or you know how For they sure. live. And at the end of the day, you embrace that. Mm. It's not a thing that you look at and you say, ah, I don't know about that. It's like, no, you don't know any different. When this is your normal. Yeah, totally. And when someone, when somebody clocks it or speaks out of turn and that, that really, it pricks your ears up. You're like, huh? where are you from? What? Yeah, where are weird. you? Yeah, where are you from? Yeah. It's weird because this is, this is, this is the normal. Yeah, yeah. This is the normal. It's not any different. This is the normal. People yeah. of every single, you know, rainbow of colours or mm. whatever their faith is, it's, mm. it's, it's all right to live alongside each other. Mm. It's the normal. For sure. Yes. When did your passion for music begin? Okay, my passion for music began early. As I was told as a child, I could sleep through the loudest music as a baby. It never bothered me. There was always music in my household. My mum loved music. My dad, at the time, had a reggae band who used to go out and... Name of the reggae band. Um, right, he had a reggae band called Undivided Roots and then it turned to Rough Cut. And basically, Fire. they went around the world backing... Like, with Undivided Roots, he did have a top ten called Party Night here, like reggae top ten at the oh, time. Tight. And then... Um, then he, he went on to form a band with some of his m band members. And it was a backing band for all the artists that came, mm -hmm. the reggae artists. So everyone from Beres Hammond oh, sick. to, yeah. um, you know, like every single reggae artist that had a name. That's sick. Alton Ellis, like yeah. John Holt, everyone. So Barrington Levy, everyone. So I'd grown <laughs> up around... Music all the time. See, Northwest London does not fuck about. <laughs> you know what? It has such. The thing is, I say that people find their talent when when there's I don't know when there's fellow creatives or freedom or freedom that you feel like okay mm. I have the freedom to do this or this freedom to go there so yeah so I'd always grown yeah. up around music so when I got to school mm. I got to school I was always singing I was you know that girl that was always singing in the, mm. in the class mm. like even my um, <laughs> old schoolmates were like yeah she was always singing I was always the singing you so, the singing one yeah I was the singing one so <laughs> in the choir I'd be like oh yeah you know can I sing that part blah 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 so I was always singing so mm. I'd always wanted to sing and because I'd seen that 
it could happen. And you saw it within the family. And I saw it within the family. Structure, and I, yeah. I was, you know, like, I was always around them, like Artanelis and everyone. I knew them, like, they're my family. So that everyone. Mad. No, like it's, like, it's like my family. So I was always around these people. And you thought, never thought twice. You were just like, this is what happens in everyone's family. <laughs> I, 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 know, I know, right? So I thought, okay, cool. This is just my family. Yeah, yeah. So this is how it happens. So, yeah. So then mm. when I got to, obviously, my teenage years, and I was like, okay, cool. I still yeah. love music because when I was in primary school, I was trying to make bands and then when I was in secondary school I was trying to make bands and um, That's so sick. yeah so it was always a thing of no I want to be in a band I'm going to make a band I'm going to make a band yeah. and then what if we were in a band what if, what if, <laughs> do you want to be in a band wanna, no it's true like <laughs> yeah. I was in school I was like yeah do you want to yeah, yeah. be in a band so yeah so I got um, my first like like band as a teenager yeah. with my friends at school and we was a rap we was rapping mm. so I was I started out I was always singing I was always that one that's singing, but I loved rapping too. Mm. So I started a rapping band and then that rapping band, we'd done that and then we'd done little shows and then we won yeah, talented yeah, yeah. shows in house <laughs> and stuff like that. Yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. No, that was good because it was a rap. It was like a talent show. Mm. It was called Nubian Spotlight. And um, we went there, four girls. It was called 4x4 at the time. Cool, so what, sorry? 4x4. Four 4x4. By four. Four by four. Four by four. Yeah. So we went there and... It was four girls, uh, and at this time, rapping. Mm, they were mm. like, really? Four so of you as well. Four of us as well. So it was there, and there was like a couple of really good bands that we knew, because they were from the area, like mm. singing bands and mm. stuff like that. So they didn't know us like that, because we hadn't been doing it. We've been we've been home practicing. You know, like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like just at home, practicing, practicing And you hadn't had weekend. it on the big speakers no, or nothing no, yet. No, no, because what we had, we had our own microphones and stuff like that. So when we was rehearsing we'd have our own microphones and stuff but we didn't hear it on the big speakers yet so then we done the Ubian spotlight so the guys went on and they were good and then the singing group went on and got, uh, uh, so it was more guys than girls mm. on this talent show so it was like oh my god but we went there and we went on and then we won we won like we gave it everything we won and then like even the guys that were the the guys of the area of the time they were like were they salty were they they were was, right? nah they was like nah you girls were really really good were you doing the whole was it all coordinated and everything was nah, all movement dance no 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 dance everyone had just their, straight aggressive it was straight aggressive everyone had their own sound so every rapper was rapping differently so how, no you, one how has, old were you then how old were you then I must have been about I don't know maybe like 14, 15, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, 14 or 15. So, like, kind of your MTV raps era. Yeah, like just... so I was just like, yeah, okay, cool. Fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, done that. So, then, and then, yeah, so done that. So, I was always trying to be mm. in the music industry because I always loved music. Mm. So, then um, I got to the stage where obviously I met Alicia and then mm. met the girls. Was that around the same time? No, 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 no. Was that later. was years later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I say in between that time, I was always trying, always singing, always this, mm -hmm. always that. I was always, my pursuit of music, I was doing it. That's crazy. In my head, I was like, okay, cool. This is what I was born to do. You're making your own music? You're making your, writing your own, penning your always, own songs? Always, yeah. always. From school, I had my book, mm. writing, weekends. My mum was a strict mother. Mm. She said to me, okay, mm. my, no, my mom said to me, no, she was so strict. Like one time I was meant to, I wanted to go to an all dayer because uh -huh. back in the day they had music things, yeah. but it was just all dayers. So yeah, yeah. it was an all dayer. So all my friends were going, they was like, yeah, we're going to the all dayer. Are you coming? And I was like, yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming. So I said, mom, can I go to this all dayer, please? And she was like, what do you mean? I said, Mum, it's an all day. Don't worry sounds about it. Sounds scary from the offset, don't I, I know, right? It sounds scary from the offset. I said, I said, Mum, it's an all day. I don't worry about it. Mm. I'm, you know, I'm going to save my pocket money yeah, to yeah. make sure that I have an outfit. Don't worry about it. Like, just worry <laughs> about it. So I asked my mum like three weeks, three or four weeks, maybe even a month yeah, before yeah. then, because everyone was talking about it. Everyone had the poster that was going to the all day. Yeah, great. Okay, cool. So, mm, uh -oh. okay. <laughs> so it got down to the point. So I was like, okay, cool. So I got up the morning, so I done my usual household duties. Everything to Ev spec. No, everything, everything. to spec <laughs> and more. Like 
I made the dinner. I made everything done. It was co- house was clean. Everything was done. So my mum didn't have to do anything. So I was like, okay, cool. This better be good news, yeah, Ruth, this, I'll tell you. Nah. So I was like, okay, cool, fine. So I got my stuff together, got yeah. dressed. My mum saw me getting dressed. I was like, yeah, mum. It's going on. Yeah, it's going I'm like, yeah, because my girls are coming to get me. Because yeah, yeah. they're coming to the door. Because everyone, we're going to go together. So I was like, okay, cool, got oh, dressed. Oh, God. Yeah, okay, cool. So I got dressed. I was like, yeah, so got dressed. So then I was like, yeah, mum, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go now. Like the girls are coming in 10 minutes. I'm ready to go. Mum said, go where? I said, oh, sorry, no. mum. I knew it. She said, go where? I said, mum, but I told you, you seen me getting dressed in my hair and stuff. She said, you can do, mum, West Indian. She go said, on. you can do everything you want to do. You can do it all day in your bedroom. So that is the nearest to all day you are getting. Oh my. All day in my bedroom. All day in my bedroom. And I was dressed. I cried so much. She said, yes, you can. Mama, what kind of discipline Mom, is like, that? Mom, like, why are you doing that? She said, you can all day, all night in your bedroom. That's what she said. Wow. You can all day, all night in your bedroom. I, I so cried. I so cried. When my girls came to the door, I was just like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't make it. But I was like, really, Mom? Yeah. And then she doesn't remember that now. Don't remember. <laughs> she, was, she was like, well. No. Shape shift. Yeah, I know. Shape shift. Right. Life. And then she said to me, she said, yeah, but, you know, you was in all day and all night in your bedroom. And look what you did. You write songs. True. 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 But, True. But, but, the, but the humility. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the thing was this. Is that for me, music was my escapism. Because I would gotcha. be like, okay, all right. I know that I'm mad right now, mm. but I'd write it down. Yeah, true. I'd write Ooh, it down. I like that. I'd write it down. So how I'm feeling right now, I'd write it down in a rap or I'd write it down in a song. So yeah, her all day in and mm. all night in the bedroom did actually lead to yeah. what? Because she didn't let me out. So I was creative yeah. in my own way. So for me, I found my bedroom as my place of solace and it's my it was my sanctuary for peace because i can do anything i want mm. to all day all night in there but i could write and be as creative as i wanted to be in my own space mm. and when it comes to being a creative you need a space that you feel comfortable mm. that hugs you when you go in that mm. has every single thing you love in one space that makes you feel comfortable enough to say, you know what, okay, cool. Oh, that's fine. I'm here yeah. and I want to write this or yeah. I want to do this because this is your space of peace. Just that's one cool. space of peace that yeah. you have all the little items and stuff that you love, that you, your mind is allowed to relax <sighs> and be still and create. Right, okay. Back it up. <laughs> Rewind that back a bit here. Right. right, so. Yes. If... With that, okay. So, Mama put in the resistance. She put in, putting up a resistance. She did. <laughs> she did. Would you argue? Because we're talking here about tranquility, space, uh, feng shui, a little bit. Of, you know what I mean? Something that kind of sets a tone and a mood for you to create what you want to create. But when you got like a uh, an authoritative, even hey, let's even go back to communities. Let's even go back to there. What we were talking about at the start. You know, like it, is it that? With that level of resistance, yeah, you get a different dynamic in song. You get diff- Sometimes you actually do need, you need that, that pressure. You need that ceiling. You need you, that thing. You do. Yeah. Because I think that pressure makes diamonds, doesn't it? Mm. Oh, hey. <laughs> there you go. Pressure makes diamonds. Yeah. So sometimes you are, <clears throat> you are put under situations that can be very, very stressful yeah. and add a lot of pressure to your life. Mm. But sometimes you have to know that just take it each day as it comes. It's it's helping you and moulding you to be something else. Mm. And it may be like your place of growth is in that place of pressure Mm. and that place of you can't. Mm. It it moulds you to be something more. But when you're an artist, musician or more, yes, or other, you, I feel, for, I feel for people that don't have that emotional outlet. Although I'm sure there is a, an emotional outlet for everything. There is. 
There is. Yeah. But but you, as a as a musician and an artist, you, it's that thankless effort that art that just thankless task of giving. You take what you, essentially is your burden. Yes. And you release it out there, like that that burden. That could have been like kindling forever. <laughs> Yep, no, but it can, Mm. especially with any creative, with any creative that creates something Mm. and something that is from them. Mm. It's not always the easiest to release something Mm. that you create, that Mm. you hold so there or was made from so much of your mind or so much of your being that Mm. you created and said, okay, cool, this Mm. is it. As painful as it might be. As painful as it might be, but Mm. sometimes you either hold on to it or sometimes you get to a stage where you're like, okay, cool, I'm ready to let this go. So it has two. Mm. It has two ways because it has the two ways. That's as cool. in, okay, cool, I can do this mm. and I can write this, or I can do this and I can create this. But when you put so much into it, do you want to release it? Because you then question what when you release it, what that says about you. I'm fucking around around here. What do you think <laughs> was going to happen? Huh? Having it right here. Come on, it's Brina and House. Uh, what's the most hardest most uh most forced pushing out emotive moment that you've ever suffered as an as an artist as an artist yeah okay so i went through a lot of emotions when i was in my former group Mm -hmm. because they saw a lot of things that i didn't see and it took a lot a lot of time for me to recognize that sometimes (laughs) <laughs> opinions and opinions it doesn't it's not someone's opinion is not the soul and being of you mm. and sometimes that's hard when you're creative when you're constantly getting yeah. critiqued or yeah. you know it was a weird time because yeah. at that time as you said i grew up in a multicultural rainbow mm, 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 mm. so when i got into music industry i was like okay cool this is fine but then they mm. saw they saw colors I didn't see colour mm. and I didn't grow up around colour. Mm. So that hit me hard because they were like, okay, well, black girls don't go on front covers of magazines or black girls don't sell magazines. Mm. And basically they were saying to me that, you know, you just need to basically just be quiet because you're doing too much already. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And I was like, are we here to sell records or not? Are like, we here on, to sell man. records? Because, okay, so you don't see me. For a long time, I felt like I wasn't seen. But obviously, I was heard. So it's, it was a weird... Yeah, that yeah, that, yeah, that was the it. most... That was trying for me. When I think about, when I think about Mystique um, and I think about your role in it, I genuinely yes. put you at the forefront. And I genuinely, because you're the singer, uh, just, that was just, sorry, just putting it out there. That, you don't have to, you, that's my opinion. But, but here's the thing. Now you explain it, it sounds to me like you, you and the, the girls all as a collective fought tooth and nail in some respects to make yourselves heard in, a, in, in the climate that it was. Is that what you were kind of suggesting? Because it, because it, it never, it never, or it never translated in such a way. But that maybe that's a lot to your credit. No, because okay, cool. So the thing is this: as I said, I'd grown up under a rainbow of color of people, mm. so I didn't know Just, no yeah. difference. That, that I'd never been like I went to a Catholic school, mm. like primary, secondary mm. school, mm. and it was just even when like there were situations where I may have been, you know, <laughs> the only. <laughs> woman of colour there I didn't feel it and they didn't make me feel that way so I didn't I was not like I was introduced to Mm. colour when I got into the music industry Mm. and that's what I found that it hit me really really hard but when it came to it I knew that in the position that we were in Mm. I wanted to be someone that if someone saw me and maybe looked like me, mm. maybe saw that it was possible to do, mm. even though I may have been smiling and suffering in silence. Mm. Sometimes your journeys aren't just for you. 
Sometimes your journeys aren't just for mm. you. It's for somebody else. So if mm. you've made, if your journey has made an impact on somebody else's life yeah. in a positive way, then I will take the not so nice mm. to make sure that somebody else's life might be much nicer. That's, that is like, what epiphany. That's crazy. That's crazy. Because some people... Like we were talking about this actually. To be uh, to, to be fair, we were talking about it before we jumped on. We were talking about how music has its like bubble, yes. and uh, all of a sudden, like you know, you go. Th- what we were saying, we go through that seventies, eighties, nineties playlists, you know, and you just put them in a nice little comfort place. That's little, right. You know, nostalgia That's place. That's right. Of, this is the nineties. This is the eighties. This is the early noughties. And um, you never really know how far your music actually touches people. No. Metaphorically, of course. But you know what I mean? You never know how far like your sound carries as time progresses, as time moves on, you know, you go on the naughty's playlist. Ah, there's mistake. You know what I mean? It's like No, it's true. It's crazy. It's crazy because obviously I'd been away from the industry for so long. Yeah. And then I came on to do a show with obviously Miss Banks and Lady Shirt and everyone. Mm. And it was it was really, really uplifting because it was the first time they had all women of colour mm, 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 mm. <laughs> on a show. And I'm like, so how's that? It's only now that that is happening. Yeah. But it was nice because when I went there and I'd done the show, it was amazing. <laughs> and then the ladies came up to me and they was like, you don't understand. We saw you. And, you know, you from seeing you, we knew it was possible. And, you know, oh, you know, so it brought sick. such a t- like it brought a tear to my eye yeah. because you when you're doing things, you, you you're doing it because you want it to leave an impact for somebody mm. else yeah. so that they can know that, you know, there's a door there. Try mm. and, you know, get to that place where you keep on pushing for sure. Keep on pushing. So at the end of the day, I see it as OK, cool. I, that was me then. Mm. Um, I wasn't as talkative as I am now because it took a long time to get to a stage where I could talk about what I went through back mm. then. And back then it was not known to talk about those situations. Mm. But mm. obviously with the... Especially current, collectively as a yeah, group Yeah, as collectively well. as a group. Been, mm. And I would say that even in the group, it was weird because obviously I, it was a different sort of thing. Mm. Obviously there was color but there was colorism too because mm. remember i was still i was the darkest yes, girl right, gotcha. so i didn't get n- i got one cover and that was the cover of pride but the other two girls did yeah so it was colorism but that wasn't brought about by the girls it was brought about by the industry the industry and the team that the, our management team at mm. the time that's what i'd say how did we don't get too deep into this because yeah. i you know i mean like, yeah. yes um well, was there a sense of betrayal in in many respects? Was there like a feeling of like, hey man, like what the, f-? you know what I mean? Did you ever, did it ever, because like you say, you, you felt like you didn't have a voice, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, it couldn't be further from the truth right now, you know what I mean? So it's <laughs> yeah. hard to imagine, right? Yeah. But uh, yeah, within the restriction of like the, the trio and you you being in that situation, yeah. did you ever feel like, oh, fuck man, what's the fuck wrong with this lot? <laughs> Do you know what? I think I did have times like that, mm. but I was more thankful. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was more thankful because there was an opportunity that was there. Mm. And regardless of how somebody else saw me, yeah. at that time I wasn't seeing that. Mm. I wanted oh, to okay. be something beyond what mm. you think and your yeah. opinion, because your opinions are not facts about me even though it hurt me at that mm. time, it wasn't a fact, but I didn't know that back then. I just thought, okay, cool. Well, if that's what everyone thinks, but I was born to sing and mm. I was born to do music. Mm. So I wasn't going to allow that to kind of stop me when I was in the group. And the challenge of that. The challenge of it. The, yeah. Cause I'd all, the thing is, is that, as you know, I've brought up around challenges yeah. and challenges. Yeah. It makes it, 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 it grows. Totally. You. I love a good challenge, me. I like a good no. No's are great. Do you know what? It's, I, I don't mind a no. I don't mind a no. But the thing that I had a problem with is, okay, cool. 
you don't see me, but you hear me. Mm. You hear every single single thing yeah, I yeah. say, everything I sing, you hear, yeah. but yeah. you don't see me. Yeah. So that's the thing that I had. I didn't understand that mm. because, as I said to you, I grew up in a rainbow color. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I saw everyone. When coming out of um, Mystique, yes, like you, you guys were. <laughs> you know I mean, you, you would you did your thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess, I mean, we, we you all know that other contenders that were all being around the pop charts at that time, but is there like a level of, um, it sounds a bit melodramatic, like a level of like PTSD when you kind of come off a ride like that? Because you said you kind of took a back seat from it, or at least you gathered your thoughts to a degree. You, you weren't as much in that spotlight. No. Was there like a level of like PTSD where you kind of felt to yourself, oh, you know what, I'm a bit shelled by all of that. I think I'm just going to chill for a second. <laughs> No, definitely. Yeah. For, for me, I'd say it's a bit. It was a bittersweet moment the, mm. t- the day that, you know, everything came to a head. Yeah. It was bittersweet because obviously we had an amazing time. Mm. We'd done such a lot from a group that was signed to a small label because mm. big labels didn't want to sign us. So we'd done so much, but mm. at the same time, for my sanity and my peace, mm. I needed a place to be that wasn't there. Mm. So... In that wasn't there moment, as you said, you have to, you take time to gather your thoughts together because for such a long time, you are part of a unit. Yeah. And as a unit, you you compromise because you have to compromise yeah. Yeah. in order to make everything work. So it was a working thing of compromise all mm. the time. So if you've been doing mm. that for like eight to 10 years, like mm. how do you get to a stage where you don't compromise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that is that your normal? Where my wing girls go, you know, yeah. all of a sudden your stabilizers yeah. are off. Yeah, your like, stabilizers are off and you're like, okay, cool. I don't really yeah. know how to feel in this time it spin of... You out. They spin you out. Yeah, I don't know how to feel in that time of, yeah, yeah. just you. That's mad. Vulnerable? Without a doubt. Definitely vulnerable. Mm. Because when you're in a group, you're surrounded by so many people and so many opinions and so many things. And it's always, it's like 24 seven a day. Like, so when that stops and it ceases, you, you, it's like you're in the middle of the, in the desert. It's the middle of nowhere where everything's just whirling around, but sandstorm, but you're, yeah. Like you're just, you're just there. Yeah. No one can help you, not really. No, because it's 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 a it's a shared experience by three people. Do you think they would fill in it as well? I couldn't tell you that. I couldn't. I couldn't speak on behalf of mm, them for sure. Because at the end of the day, every single person has it's a their mechanism. It, their mechanism and different yeah. journey. Yeah. And their journey, I couldn't tell you their journey, mm. but I know what my journey was, mm. and my journey. It was it was trying times. Mm. That's what I'd say, mm. because you're trying yourself on every single forum, mm. because you don't know where to go. It's kind of yeah. like you're lost, yeah. and you have to try and find yourself again and build yourself up again. Mm. And at that time, with the music industry, I was not really friends oh, with the music industry. I was not really friends. There's a lot of moving parts around that time as well. Yeah. Let's look at the social media explosion. Labels becoming more, you know. Dis, dis, fractured and and just I, I personally think yes. and this is only you know it takes a life to have one right yes only in retrospect I can see you guys and I think to myself yeah man you know what you guys you did your thing you kind of came off the ride at a pretty decent time when you think about the up and how everything is after that and how things just grime came in you know it was it was dubstep, and then you know social media became the thing, and then torrents and shit like that. You know what I mean? It was that was a that was a that was probably more scarier than <laughs> than anything, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose it it was, but I suppose in today's way of doing music, it's 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 people are taking things on themselves, mm. as in mm. there's more open room for them to yeah. do their own thing yeah. and not being 
you know, caught in a way of this is how we do things. Mm. Now... You can fight your corner now. Yeah, now people mm. are fighting their own corners, which I think is it's quite... <laughs> I, like, I'm like, great. At mm. least, you know, now, time, people are starting to take everything into their own hands mm. or starting to say, okay, cool, maybe I can do this or mm. maybe... And they feel like there's opportunities that they can take to go forth. And that's always nice. Yeah, that's always sick. Always nice. What inspires you in that? Well, like, from that point of, and rightfully so, solo, you know what I mean, doing your thing. What inspired, what inspires you, right, as of when it started to now? What, what, what's that forthright music industry that inspires you the most? What inspires me the most about music... And the industry. And the industry. Yeah, to a great extent. Is that it's a place of, I'd say, freedom, mm. as in cultural freedom for everyone. Mm. Because when people are writing their songs or putting their music together and saying, okay, cool, this is a representation of me, it's freedom. Mm. It's, 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 it's a language mm. that... No one can stop. Mm. And it's a language that it gets to certain people. Mm. Like you might you might do a song and you think, nah, that's not a song, it's not really good. But it might speak to someone, help them feel a different way. Mm. And it's so many, I think songs and the music industry, it's good because it has a soundtrack to everybody's life. With music, there are so many... Music is the soundtrack Facts. to everybody's life. So true. And certain soundtracks, when you s hear certain mm -hmm. songs, it takes you to a different space and a different place, especially with everything that's going on right now. N needed. It's needed. It's a bubble that you can go into and just say, I'm okay here. Do you know something? You, you, I, I was on a trailer of thought um, uh, uh, last night, I think, or the other day. And I, I was thinking about rebel songs. I was thinking about like political slanted. I mean, organisations as far as music goes, like Public Enemy and and um, you know Bob Marley, um, Hendrix to a degree. All yeah. these you know Sex Pistols, yeah. all these sort of heavy duty stuff, right? Yeah. And I think to, I, at first I thought to myself, why don't why isn't there like a new band like that now? But I kind of concluded it that there is a song for everyone and. Perhaps nowadays it isn't actually about, it ain't about um, making another rebel song because that already exists. Yeah. It's almost like find your song, you find have your to. thing because this is more emotive now. Yeah. We're in a, a emotive world. And uh, yeah, we, we find our own soundtracks, don't we? And yeah. It doesn't that's... always have to re refer to everything that's going on. No, it doesn't have mm. to refer to everything that's going on. As you said, like, music is a way of escapism mm. for a moment or three minutes or whatever it is it's that way of escapism mm. you don't need to speak about everything mm. but as long as your message may be helping to elevate someone or bring a smile yeah. to their face that's the main thing mm. because it's a place of thing that people when they're told to be still they always go to music because yeah. music brings about a time of great memories yeah. or sad memories it doesn't matter but music everyone has a soundtrack and that's the most important thing is that mm. if you do a music that is a soundtrack to someone's life or someone can say ah oh, this song really helped mm. me through that time or oh no i was in love at that mm. time and this is the song that we was listening to as long as you can do that mm. with music then what what else is there because it it doesn't have it doesn't have a color it doesn't have nothing people are listening with their ears that's what's it's crazy. not it's not it's not sight it's not visual first it's hearing first it's the biggest threat to Come any organization on. uncontrollable emotion capturing someone's attention yes. indefinitely indefinitely without it having to be a visual yeah no it's, prejudice it's like i'm in it or not nothing and you're engaged and you're lost you're engaged and you're lost they can't fuck they can't mess about they can't they can't they can't stop it it's really hard for people to understand that you know especially like with the age of like technological breakthroughs and fake news and just all that madness mm -hmm. um well like bruce springsteen born in usa it was actually a political song against vietnam and 
the, the protests that were going on in America, but then, like, what was it? Reagan used it as his anthem. His anthem. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's how, that's how music is implied in so many different ways. And yeah, because it, co- it, it connects to people without any visual. Mm. It is the greatest component without you having to do anything. Mm. People hear and they like. Mm. And that's how music used to be. There mm. was no visuals with music mm. when it first came out. Music wasn't visual. Mm. It was about what someone heard or they'd go to somewhere where they can hear the music. Mm. And it was a hear and a feel and what the music brought, the feelings that the music brought. Mm. And then as time goes on, visuals are very, very, you know, Mm. it's quite dominant. But the music is the thing that connects Mm. and moves someone's mind and moves their spirits and moves their energy. And that's the most powerful thing. There's some people that rely heavy on imagery and... which I. You know, I'm I'm a seven second attention span MTV upbringing. You know what I mean? Like I, and I, I I have my flaws. I, but I and I do get the value in a visual. You know, like I, I like to know. A part of me likes to know the lane. Yes, of course. Do you know what I mean? Um, especially when, well, even like forty five seconds on an Instagram post, it's like you feel like you've seen an artist within the. That's the attention span now, and you know. Back in the day, you know, Otis Redding and, you know, Tom Jones and, you know, these guys, you know, they were just doing their thing. They were just doing their thing. They were just doing their thing. And that's, that's, that's the thing that's charming to me. I'm like, yeah, how do we ever get, how do we, how would we ever get back to that? I think it's, I think the thing is that music is born in so many different times. Mm. But when people go through times of pressure, because as we said, they mm. make diamonds. That's when people come up with mm. amazing stuff mm. because it's pressure that you you haven't felt yeah. before anywhere. And those artists, as you said, they weren't trying to be they anybody else. They would, weren't trying. It was them just singing how they felt. Yeah. There was no, there was no, there's no, there was no um, pattern mm. to what no they compromise. did. There's no compromise. They just said, "This is how I'm feeling right now." I'm telling Freddie Mercury to compromise these days. <laughs> yeah, he didn't compromise, <laughs> and that's how music. The ones that stay are the ones that are usually the ones that come in an original form mm. that someone picks up and says, "That's a, a little bit different mm. than something else." Mm. And that's what's nice about music that is constantly creative and creative. And I say music is the thing. The thing is, is that you can have a million people in one room. Mm. And if they all like the first, the same song, mm. that's love. Yeah, that's... So, <laughs> you know, shh, it's love. Yeah, music it's is that thing of love. Mm. That's what it endorses. Love through generations, through mm. countries, through miles, through sea, through mm-hmm. air. Like love is that connection that, the music is that connection that no one can stop yeah. because it does it by itself. That's so sick. You know, like, no matter what Kanye does, <laughs> you put one of his tunes on and it's like, ah, oh, it's all right now. Yeah. Isn't that weird? Yeah, all the commotion, all the melee, it just comes down to one thing. Is it good or not? Yeah. And does it connect to you mm. or not? Do you um? I mean, you talk about it, you weren't as outspoken. Yeah, I wasn't as outspoken. What, uh, these kind of conversations. Yeah. When did where? How did this spawn? How did this? How did? Because you 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 clearly have a brainiac side to music, and you <laughs> you know what I mean. Oh, thank you. you know what I'm saying. Oh, um, yeah. Th- with you know, greatest respect, because it's it's not a it's not an easy vocation. You have to know you you have to. It's like a, it's like being a taxi cab driver in London. You know, you've got to know the knowledge, right? Yeah. And you've got to know where everything is. How long did it take you to kind of like master this? What we're seeing right right now, Sabrina Washington. It's taken a long time. Uh, yeah. I'd say that it's taken. A lot of years since the group. I'd mm. say that I've started to maybe coming to myself properly and speaking. Mm. I'd say maybe a year and a bit, maybe a year and a half or so. Damn. Because I haven't been, I haven't been vocal. I haven't. Mm. So 
it's nice now that I'm surrounded by, like I have, you know, my management, my team, they are, they're there. And I never mm. felt that. And I didn't feel like anyone saw me before. Yeah. And no one really asked me anything. And mm. I was always told to be silent. So I'd done that. Um, yeah, I think I'm kind of the same. I mean, I, this thing here, you know what I mean? I've got no choice but the fucking <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, all right, here we go. You know, but you, you get super on it and you get thick skinned and you've got. With age comes empowerment, and you've got this. Oh, I'm gonna own this because this is me, and then no one else can tell me what me is. Yeah, do you know what I mean? That's true. Mm. So it's taken time to get to that place, mm. and as I said, I released a single last year, end of last year, mm. and basically it was like gone, and it was talking about all my experiences. Yeah, that is badass, gone. And what I loved about it was that it took me long to release it because I wrote it a while ago mm. because as I said I'm always like I'm trying to I take note of mm. times how I feel and dude there was can I just sorry I don't mean I mean to interrupt you like, like so early on here your the lyrical content on that tune mm -hmm. I, I understand why you know what I mean like there was a lot of depth there probably a lot of habits as well that you were probably in transition with you know drinking but my drinking wasn't a long. It was it was a short stout. It was enough though. It was enough well, for was you it, to it, say. It was, right, it, was an, it was enough to write that record. Exactly. It was enough to write that record mm -hmm. in that time. That's, that's that's all you need. And that was as soon as the group. It's like a wake up call. Yeah, it was like a wake up call. Like mm. as after the group mm. and stuff like that. I'd say I wrote that record. I don't know about a year or a couple of years after that. Mm. But I took note about how I feel mm. and. Mm -mm. I was like, okay, cool. That's how I felt at that time. Mm. Because I was like, okay, cool. I was never, I was never in someone's drink. And I don't mm. smoke. I'm like, I'm, I was always the teetotal. So when... I wish I could say that about drink, but we're pretty boring on the smoking front. I don't do anything. Yeah, like, yeah really. no, I'm pretty boring. Like, they <laughs> raised a great Catholic girl. <laughs> I'm tell you. Like, I'm pretty boring. So, yeah. So when... Um, that happened. I was like, okay, hey, cool. All right. Let me see if I can find a way of escapism to get my feelings out. So yeah, that's when I wrote that song. When I was in that moment. Okay, cool. I'm going to try this to see, see if I can do this to get that. I was like, okay, hey, cool. And I got it. And I was like, okay, hey, cool. But what I like about it is that it was just saying exactly how I felt. Like, mm. Don't ask me where I've been because I know what people are going to say. Where have you been? Because I knew that I wasn't coming back. When I wrote that, when I wrote mm. that record, I was like, I'm, I'm like, I'm not going back into the music industry. Yeah. That's how I felt. I'm not going back. So don't I've ask so me. I've so been there too. Come I know on. exactly what you're talking so about. So I was like, don't ask me where I've been. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I was by myself because no one was there. Yeah. So yeah. don't ask me anything. So yeah. that song was like, yeah, cool. There you go. Bye. Yeah. Out. Peace out. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny. I get, I get entirely why you'd be like, take you a little while to get that that emotion out on plate, on song, out there, because it's it was so done. It one it, minute it's gone. Yeah, and it was so... The thing is, is that in that moment, as I said, like, the year after, I felt that, mm. and it was my feelings, considering I had had writing on all of the songs, but it was... I was, I was writing from a point of everyone... And that was the time, that was the first time that I wrote from a moment of just me mm. and how I feel right now. Oh, yeah, that must have been crazy. Yeah. Vulnerable. You had to put that out on your own. Yeah. So that was, that was really, so, but do you know what was nice about it? What was nice is that the write-ups in the newspapers and the magazines, they actually heard what I was saying. Mm. So I was like, okay, cool, they do see me. Because mm -hmm. I always thought, so, I always felt so invisible before. Mm -hmm. So it was nice to be seen. And it was seen because of, you know, my writing and what I was saying. I just can't, I can't envisage you invisible. <laughs> Not in mistake, I, just don't, I don't see it. But I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying in terms of your voice, in terms of your contribution in songwriting. Yeah. In terms of the formation, the formation of it, the yeah. industry, everything. You know, yeah, I get it. I get it. Um, and your ten thousand hours uh, serves you right. You uh, <laughs> you got yourself. 
so well established in songwriting that must have just been such a relief to get that out and be like yeah okay good feedback wicked yeah it was it was it was a relief to get it out because mm. i knew that okay cool but it was weird because obviously i had to go into the closet to get that out to say okay that shit can suck sometimes. Yeah, so this bad. is how it felt <laughs> that time. Okay, cool. Because I know that obviously if I'm stepping back, people are going to know, mm. okay, cool. Why were you taking so long? Yeah. So, okay, cool. This is how I felt at the time mm. when everything went, <laughs> everything went dark, everything went black. Mm. When it faded to black, I felt like that for that, for a short period period of time but that was my feelings mm. and the thing is with creatives is that we recognize our feelings we are feeling people yeah. we feel we can go into a room and feel something it's a feeling so when you have that feeling mm. if you kind of embrace that feeling and, and and write it down or take you know a note of okay this is how this mm. makes me feel at this time it's always something that moves you and it most probably will move somebody else so hard though isn't it it's hard oh, it's hard it's really hard sometimes i listen back to some of the things that i was so deadly deadly emotive about i was so and i think i kind of laugh at it now but i kind of and you kind of uh, that's a little bit oh, put that back in the drawer <laughs> you know what i mean but had you not had it uh not allowed yourself denied yourself the opportunity to freshen up put it out there be a vision be, be tired worn out tied up person wouldn't you yeah exactly but that's how it felt with that song because as i said that was done like a year or two yeah. like after the group mm. was done so i think that was like in that time wow. of okay cool yeah so and then that sat there and i was like uh, it's too much yeah, emotion. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, it's too much emotion. Oh, that old thing. Yeah, that's just oh, a that thing. thing. That's <laughs> but it was my personal emotions of yeah. how I felt at that time. Mm -hmm. And I was, I've never, as I said, I've mm. never been a speaker. I've always been someone that I'd be like, okay, cool. I'll smile through it. I'll smile through my worst times. I'll smile. I've always been a smile. I'm glad you asked. Me. You wouldn't be doing podcasts, would you? <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. Yeah, I'm a smiler, so I'm always smiling, but yeah. it was nice to be seen. Yeah, that's cool as fuck. And things have just, they just keep on churning Thanks. in Sabrina camp, right? They just keep on moving. Don't call me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't call me. Right, mm. so. This is, the, this is the new joint, by yeah. the way. So the new joint is me going, taking it back to basics of mm. where, you know, we started in mm. the music that was, at the time, something that everyone danced to. Yeah. And in this time mm. of constant everything, mm. you need a place... Or a music that will say, "Okay, cool. I'm not. I'm not here for now. Like, yeah. These three minutes are just. I'm somewhere else, and it's taking me back to a memory and a time of just mm. good feelings yeah. and just of good energy, mm. and takes you away in a little bubble. And that's what I like about Don't Call Me because mm. it takes you away from everything mm. that's going on. Just put the Air Maxes back on. And yeah, just that's right. Drop the shell top and just be do right." I still don't understand for the life of me. Yes. Why garage music? Yes. Just is not. It had it, it dips and moves. I just be. It's just such a unique sound. And why the fuck do it keep on going in and out of fashion? I have no idea. I know. It does my head in? It's but it's a feel good factor. Yeah. Because like when I was in the studio with like Ali and Mac putting this together, like I was like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, we were just like just like that, just yeah, like that. Like, yeah, like yeah. Ali and like White Nerd was like, yeah, like it was a good feeling. Mm. And what happened to the music? Mm. That's just good feeling mm. and just good energy. Yeah, yeah. And that's it. That's garage to that's me, man. Garage, it's just good yeah. feeling. People used to go out and dress up. Always dressed up. People were always well dressed. Then you go treading on them shoes. You said, so "Don't tread on anybody's <laughs> shoes." Yeah. So yeah, it was always like a feel good factor. People dressed to go yeah. out and felt good to meet people because yeah. everyone was well attired yeah. and everyone would just wanted to have a good time. There wasn't anything else except for music that was dance music that would just make you mm. want to dance from corner to corner to corner. It's always when them MCs come in. It's always oh, when them dancers, you know, Girl, yeah, they come in and it always just gets dark. 
We've done it. It always gets to another look. I take it somewhere else. <laughs> Bloody MCs. <laughs> <laughs> but they bring the factor too because it, make, yeah, it makes you move. Yeah. And it's music that makes you yeah. move. Pied Piper. Come on. The Streets. Yep. Oh, my God. Let's get going. Um, oh, what was his name? Um, oh, he used to be part of um, Soul to Soul. I forget his name. It's going to kill me now. It's going to kill you now. Yeah, it's going to kill me. It's just so, I, I just remember the pure garage anthems. You used to be able to get them on a fucking, like four CDs into one. And it's yeah, just, I know. Like, it was just a good, it was a feel-good moment. Wookie. Wookie. Come on. There you go, I Come got on. it. Come I on. got it. Yeah, Wookie. Wookie. Come on. Yeah. It's like so many th- and so many people came up. Obviously you had like So Solid, you had Miss Dynamite. Yeah. You had Shola. Yeah. You had I'll touch Shola. K- Kelly. Mm. Come on, like Oh yeah. my god. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. You had so many females coming through in a very, very male dominated genre mm. and that was nice and then you had the hybrids as well like you had the the stantamores and the the, the basement jacks or yes. kind of taking these these elements and taking them other places yeah and, taking them out of the yeah, yeah. That's but right. soul was the, the soul vocal was still a, 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 a tr- transitional it still was part of the that definitely That's, oh man yeah it's great you need songs to sing yeah. to you know to yeah. make you feel like okay cool you know, it just yeah. takes you to a different place. Man, I love that era. It's just so... I mean, it's all a little bit sepia with, like, nostalgia-covered jackets. But it would... But... It, like I said, I don't know why it doesn't have the same... Rena- well, just not even a renaissance. Just be there. Just a lot louder. Yeah, I know. But it's starting to. It is I starting to it's, now. It's starting to research. Oh, yeah, for real it is. It's starting to research, yeah. which is nice. Yeah. And it's nice to know that, obviously, it's some music mm. that's is standing the test of time because mm. they say the good things mm. stand and what's nice is that it's standing mm. and it still has the same for sure feel good factor about it yeah. and it takes your energy and your mind to a happy place yeah. and that's what's needed in this time you're the queen of this shit right now <laughs> surely like I'm still trying to figure no nah, man it's like the throne that's that's ready, right? That's the deal. Oh, bless you. Coming through. <laughs> Coming through. Too. I think, did Fecky do something with Oxide and Neutrino? Wasn't there a tune that he did? I'm sure. Was it Fredo? I can't remember. It was like a grime MC that got Oxide yeah, and Neutrino on. I think so, yeah. That was fire. I was like, oh, hey, you know what? Salute, you know? Yeah. Recognising. A yeah. lot of it's coming down and mm. AJ's trades and all mm. these people are coming through now. Damn, yeah, of course, Come yeah. Come on. yeah. yeah. Yeah, so... It is coming through, It's it? coming through. Mm. It is coming through because it's feel-good factory music that yeah. makes everyone feel good. Yeah. Exactly. It just, it's not for a certain type of people. Mm. It's just for people. That's right. And oh, people, yeah, totally. Yeah, and people just, just love music and love good sounds and love good energy, and yeah. that's what it brings. Yeah, yeah. That's why it stands the test of time. Uh, right, mm-hmm. and on that note... Yes. <clears throat> mm-hmm. This is uh, from uh, my live stream audience. Quick fire round questions. Okay, then. All right, you ready? Mm-hmm. Sabrina Washington, quick fire. Are you ready? I think I am. Song you'd wish you'd written? Oh, song I'd wish I'd written? That's a hard one. <laughs> Sam Cooke, Change Gone Calm. Ooh, okay. Before going on a music video set, I never leave without my... Headscarf. Headscarf. Studio Essentials. <laughs> your mic and your in ears. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's it. Well, okay. Um, if you were to collab with anyone, who would it be? Um, I don't know. Dead or alive? Dead or alive. Mm. Okay, so can I go back then? Far back as you want. Tupac. Tupac. Nice. I like, <laughs> I like that. Um, well, they didn't tell you about the record industry. Um, that um, people's opinions can be hurtful and (laughs) one-dimensional. Most amazing feeling? Most amazing feeling. In the music industry, or what do you mean? It's in life in general. Most amazing feeling is getting up every day and knowing that you have another chance. 
Ooh, yes, he did. Um, what would you tell your younger self? I would tell my younger self to remember that opinions don't count and listen, form an opinion, but don't let it leave scars. Keep going and keep your faith. Mm -hmm. um, describe going on stage in three words. Exhilarating, exciting, just amazing. Any last words? Any large words? Well, I'd say thank you for having me here. My pleasure. And thank you for engaging me in good conversation. Yeah. Serves you right. <laughs> <laughs> Serves you right. Yes. You and more in, make, in making. More as well. You're only around the corner, so no excuses now. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for passing through, doll. We really have appreciated your time. Wicked. Thank you for having me. Serena Washington inside the place. <laughs> Killer Keller podcast, giving it to you live and direct. We do not ramp round here. Strictly for the street culture and music, all right? We are like Kings Without Fashion. Don't forget to share. Spread the love. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Do not sleep. I repeat, do not sleep on this repeat. We are like, yeah. Peace. Peace.